TBC Center presents the Sphere of Influence. The Sphere of Influence is the TV ministry of the baptizing church where everyone is blessed, lifted, edified, strengthened, and encouraged by the word of faith and the power of the Spirit. For further inquiries, please log on to www.tbccenter.org or visit TBC Center New Road Bus Stop. Lekki, Lagos, Nigeria. The world wants. Says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things which he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Next verse. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, Believe you that you have received them, and you will have them. And whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him, that your Father in heaven may also forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father in heaven forgive your trespasses. Everything there from 23 to 26, they are intricately linked. Amen. And I'm just going to read out a few things I've written here. That there is a defining connection to producing faith-based results between your prayer and strife. Strife implying the fact that you have ought against another person or against the people or against the system. Strife implying that there is, there is something that produces uh, negative emotions anytime the thought of a person, a system, a group of people, whatever it is, you know, by the time you're relating or their thought comes, it produces um, negative emotions hallelujah it means that you have ought against the person or that system hallelujah now the seed based thinking does not accommodate strife it does not accommodate strife when there's strife within the thinking pattern it means that you are creating a resistance to the sequence of growth of the seed of faith, which is, as it were, a dangerous antibody. Hallelujah. Something that is threatening to mutate, you know, the hope that, you know, you are trying to substantiate by the word of God. So when, when, when strife happens, it sort of scrambles that signal of prayer. As, you know, God has said here, it's like, you know, you are, you are praying about something and then, you know, once there is strife somewhere in your heart, the way you are going to um, interpret whatever God is even saying to you in the first place is not going to be accurate. Um, it's like a signal that has been scrambled and you cannot receive accurately insight. That is the answer to your prayer. Amen. Amen. So offense, as it is, is a capacity building tool. Amen. Amen. And how you manage it determines if you will progress or whether you would remain where you are. A lot of times what God is consistently trying to do is to push us to that place where we are living peaceably with all men. To bring us to that place where there is no form of strife in the system. So that the signals that is the answer to the prayers that you are praying may come and come quickly. Amen. Amen. So let's look critically at what is going on here. It's a very short message, but um, 
before I will, uh, I don't know whether I shot or not. Let me just pro progress. <laughs> Amen. But I try to finish in good time because we have evening service. Hallelujah. Amen. So let's look again at this because what you find in Mark eleven twenty three is, um, as it were, Jesus painting the picture of someone who is in faith. That you are, if you are in faith, you can say to this mountain, be removed, be cast into the sea. In other words, you can do things that are seemingly impossible. That if you have faith, you can do the impossible. Amen. So it paints a picture of a very impossible situation where you have a mountain or an obstacle before you and that if you are in faith and you don't have any doubt in your heart, you can literally cast this mountain into the sea and it will what it will obey you remember what we said on thursday that faith is synonymous as a way to the expression of power or the presence of you know the power of god to do strange things to do things that we refer to as miracles things that ordinarily shouldn't happen such that a mountain as it were being cast into the sea but what you find amen, amen is that the authority that is being exercised in verse 23 is actually taking its power from verse 24 and 25 hallelujah verse 23 there will be an impossible thing without the scripture verse 24 and verse 25 so you cannot have the results of verse 23 without fulfilling the conditions of verse 24 and 25 that's why you find verse 24 after saying that you can say to this mountain be cast into the sea and you don't doubt in your heart you believe that what you have whatsoever you say it says therefore hallelujah that in order to achieve this therefore i say to you whatever things you ask when you pray believe that you have what receive them and you will have them and he now went further to say that if you stand praying and you have anything against anyone you have to do what forgive. you have to forgive now what jesus is saying here is actually a response to the comment of the disciple so if you backtrack let's go to verse 11 you would find that you know jesus had approached a fig tree and in anticipation of taking fruit or having food from the tree and um, he got there and it was just the leaves and there was no fruit and then he had said to the leaves or to the tree that you know from this day forward no man is going to eat of you and all that and then in the process of time all right it didn't happen immediately but in the process of time when they were passing by that place the disciple observed that the tree that jesus cursed that had leaves are you following what i'm saying here that had leaves just about 24 hours before had completely what dried up and they were saying that look amen verse 21 peter remembering said to him rabbi look the fig tree which you cursed has withered away amen. amen and jesus answered and said to them have what faith in god in other words this is how the god kind of faith operates that you can begin to speak to mountains and what and they will obey you amen, amen. now what you will find is this and like i said earlier this 23 here is based on what has happened in what 24 and 25. so 
the authority that you are exercising is based on prayer that has been answered hello you are not standing authoritatively over a situation but just you know standing on nothing but you are standing because you have already prayed and already believed that you have received answer to your prayer which is also a consequence of the fact that you have no ought against any man your heart is free there is no strife whatsoever and what is telling us here is that unforgiveness is a hindrance to the operation of faith so when you stand praying you must ensure hallelujah he said if you bring your offering before the altar and you remember that you know you have something against anyone don't waste your time in the place of prayer you would not receive any answer put your gift there go and make up with that person and when you come back you can now pray the prayer of faith that will ensure that you are able to receive answer to that prayer and it is on the basis i want you to get this it is on the basis of prayer that has been answered that you can stand and speak to obstacles the prayer that you are praying in your secret place is not the same thing as what you are saying when you are commanding obstacles to leave the way praise god what you are praying about and you are saying this mountain which is an obstacle amen, amen. to live where it is and be cast into the sea is because that obstacle is standing as an hindrance to prayer that you know has already been answered so when you are standing and you are i mean so let's give an example um you know there's something they call idiot proof <laughs> praise god <laughs> you know the first time i saw i think it was all those microsoft that's how i mean i learned started using microsoft it was books we didn't have it was really no proliferation of internet like that <laughs> so you had all those books um hmm. For dummies, exactly. So I, I'm like dummies. I, I didn't get it. <laughs> Praise God. Excel for dummies. Uh, ex, you know, word for dummies. I'm like, is this for dummies? <laughs> Am I <a> dummy? <laughs> Praise God. So you know, you realize it's really not an insult. It's just saying that we've broken it down. That no matter how stupid you are in this world, you should be able to get it. <laughs> Amen. So it's dummy proof. It's idiot proof. No matter your dimension of expression of idiot, idiotism. <laughs> Prayer for dummies. Faith for dummies. Yeah. Correct. <laughs> so really that's what we are doing. <laughs> eh? Making it as simple as possible. Praise God. So nobody is dumb here, amen, by the grace of God. But, you know, just in case, <laughs> you get it. <laughs> Hallelujah. So my examples are dumb, all right? They are, you know, everybody can relate, amen. Okay, so imagine, for instance, um, so here is it. You're praying to God. You find a purpose in God, right? Um and then it's triggering a desire i need a hundred million for example let me use big figures like pd no pd i'm still stepping it up it goes to billions i need a billion i'm the next significant billionaire <laughs> you know a hundred million all right and then you go in prayer to god amen now god provides answer to that prayer and as you know he's not necessarily going to hand you a hundred million okay he will do what remember the things we've learned he will show you 
great and mighty things which you didn't know. All right? So he's going to give you a vision. He's going to give you an instruction and say, look, if you can begin to do this, all right, there is treasure here, like we learned on Thursday. There is treasure here. If you take hold of this, you will get to your what? To your 100 million. Amen. So he gives you... Um, uh, how do I put it? Okay, let me leave that so I don't digress. So he provides you a vision and says, do this and you produce a hundred million. So you've gotten what? Answer to your prayer. Praise God. We must understand how God answers prayers. Praise God. And I'm not saying he, he can't intermittently produce if need be. Amen. That okay, somebody gives you some money. But like we've seen through scriptures, it's not what will sustain you. It is never sustained anyone, all right? That, that, that is a substance that delivers to you, all right, that then produces. Praise God. A dimension of the kingdom that you come into. So he answers your prayer. So you've got an answer to the prayer. Now, based on that, in the process of what? Of exercising the instruction that God has given to you, you will now face obstacles. Do you get it now? Because, I mean, we are kingdom people. The forces of this world are not just going to sit back and see you move from A to B without putting obstacles before you. Remember that seed that fell on shallow ground? Well, temptation became because of that word, without the way. So, there will be obstacles before you. The enemy is going to try to raise, you know, obstacles like a flood hallelujah Amen. so when you come against those obstacles because you know that your prayer has been answered based on that prayer that has been answered you have confidence and authority to command those obstacles to leave the way so what you are doing is not that you are standing and saying, oh, Mark eleven twenty three 23 says that if I say to this mountain without removed, so therefore I say, I have 100 million now. I have 100 million now. No. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. You do that in your closet. Don't forget what Jesus did here was a public display. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. When you've prayed in your closet and you've dealt with with yourself amen <laughs> by the spirit and you've got an answer to the prayer you've gotten what the basis to exercise definitive authority right. over any obstacle that stands in the way of fulfilling yeah. that prayer so the mountain there that's why i said therefore when you pray that if you want to exercise this authority, you must start from the place of prayer where you have gotten an answer. And that answer you are getting is also subject to the fact that you are not walking in strife. Amen. That answer to prayer is extremely powerful. And look, look at it here. Um, in verse 23, he talked about a mountain. In verse 24, amen, he's not talking about a mountain. It's agnostic. A mountain is like an obstacle. Verse 24 says, whatsoever things you ask when you pray, whatsoever. Do you understand? So it's agnostic. It's not saying that when you stay in the place of prayer and you are asking that God move this mountain out of the way, believe that it has been done and all of that. He said, whatsoever you desire. So it's agnostic. Are you following what I'm saying? And the fulfillment or the answer to that prayer, amen, amen. is an extremely powerful mantle with which you wage war. Because the answer to that prayer is based on the word of God and you received a prophetic mandate with which you wage war. So when you receive answers to prayer, that's really 
just the beginning. Amen. What it means simply is that you have been armed for battle. You have received as it were. It's like going before the king. Remember how Peter went, you know, and got um, authority from the rulers and all that so that he can take that and based on that authority, he's going to exercise it and do what? And start putting, you know, uh, persecuting Christians and putting them in prison and, and so Paul, what did I say? I said Peter, sorry, Paul. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Do you understand? So it's as if you go in petition to God, the judge, and he says, take. I've given you answer to the prayer. With that, you now go and exercise authority on account of what has been delivered to you. When your desires have been what? Answered. And he will just give you a word. And, you know, that's it. Praise God. A rema word. And you take it and say, based on this, I am going to exercise authority. I'm going to punish any form of disobedience that is before me. Hallelujah. Now, look at how Jesus described this thing. Let's go back to that fig tree. I think verse 11. And I found some things interesting. So, so you understand the power of what, what, what is going on here. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now the next day when they came out from Bethany, he was hungry. And seeing from afar a fig tree having leaves, he went to see if perhaps he would find something on it. When he came to it, he found nothing but what? Now notice something. He said, for it was not the season for figs. In other words, it was not the time for it to produce. So, I mean, he didn't do anything wrong. It's just not my season to produce. Here was Jesus, fig tree, he saw leaves and all that, and he went to it. Praise God. Didn't find anything. But what Jesus was trying to say here is that as long as I have desire, all right, the environment must respond regardless of whether it's your season or not. Hallelujah. So the next verse is saying, he, and he answered, look at it, in response, Jesus said to it, Did the fig tree speak? Oh. You guys are giving me New King James Version. KJV says, And Jesus answered and said, Answered what? In response to this, so you see, this is just food, so it's mundane matter. But he was trying to teach a lesson here. So he said that no man eat fruit of thee thereafter forever. And his disciples heard it. It's a deliberate lesson he was trying to teach us here. Amen. That anything that I have desire for. Praise God legitimate desire my environment it is an abomination for the environment not to respond so even though it was not a season he said no that this kind of situation is an abomination no man will eat tree of you or fruit of you anymore Hallelujah. So, so you understand the kind of authority that you carry. That when desire is infused into your heart and it is granted, and you fulfill verse 24 and 25, praise God, there is nothing, it's an abomination for anything to stand in your way. Praise God. 
So the power base is what? Verse 24 and verse 25. Verse 24 itself would not happen without the fulfillment. Amen. Of verse 25. Praise God. Amen. Amen. So the mountain is not the real issue. Amen. So here is a definition of faith. Listen to me very carefully. Amen. Faith is the capacity to absorb offense. Offense promotes the growth of seed because it requires humility, death to pride. Hallelujah. I should repeat myself. You want to? <laughs> Faith is the capacity to absorb offense. In other words, when people are acting in ways to hurt you, your latitude and capacity to absorb and not react, you know, directly in response to what they have said. In other words, you know, you are doing good to them who despisefully use you and so on and so forth. Hallelujah. Amen. So faith is your capacity to absorb that offense. Because the seed, offense, the way you handle offense, amen, actually becomes a promotion for the seed of faith that God has infused into you. It's called walking in love. Hallelujah. So remember Joseph? And when we taught Joseph last year, we found that while he was even in prison, clearly there were still some things in his heart against his brothers, the way he was speaking to the butler. Amen. It's not my fault. I was thrown here. This, that, 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 that. You know? But at the fullness of time, and then eventually when he met his brother, he said, I don't have anything against you. I've now come to understand that even though you meant it for evil, God meant it for good. He didn't look at them and start saying, eh, hey, you guys, see? You know, some people are trying to receive answers to prayer in order to prove a point to some people who feel that they would never make it. Hallelujah. Until that thing is wiped off your heart, hello, you are still on your own. You are abiding alone. Do you understand what I'm saying? You have to die to pride. Praise God. So don't live your life trying to prove a point. What the magba? Eh. You, you used to curse me. You used to say I won't make it. Blah, blah, blah. This is my stepmother. This, this, da, 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 da. I want to make it. Father, let me make it. Father, let me make it. I want to show them. I want to show them. Don't let them be asking you, where is my God? Where is my God? I want to show them. <laughs> Praise God. Such does not promote hallelujah the sequence of growth called faith amen so faith is what your capacity to absorb offense you want further proof let's go to luke 17 it is extremely clear here luke 17 from verse 1 luke 17 from verse 1 very direct then said he unto the disciples, It is impossible but that what? Offenses will come. But woe unto him through whom they come. Amen. <laughs> you know, someone was saying yesterday that hey, we teach ourselves, let's walk in love, let's walk in love. It's all about the people who are deliberately using their mouth and hurting other people. We ought to also talk about that. That people should not stop hurting people with the things they say and so on. Praise God. Hallelujah. Don't worry about those people. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Your environment is just trying to provoke you to that. Do you understand what I'm saying? So there is judgment for them. I will see how that judgment happens. He says, but woe unto him through whom they come. So, I mean, God help you. Amen. But he said, it is impossible. Do you get that? 
but that offenses will come. So expect it. It's part of the journey. Do you understand? So, when you cry and say, why me, why me, why me? I don't understand. Should it be me? <laughs> if not you, who? Should it be me? <laughs> Hallelujah. It's part of what? The journey. Amen. Look at verse 2. It were better for him that a millstone were hung about his neck and that he cast into the sea that than that he should offend one of these little ones. Hallelujah. Amen. Verse 3. Take heed to what? To yourselves. In other words, take care of yourself. In other words, be conscious of what is happening to you. Take heed to what? Yourselves. If thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him, and if he repent, do what? Forgive him. Next verse. He amplified it. And if he trespass against thee seven times in a day, and seven times in a day, turn again to thee, saying, I repent, he said, you shall what? Forgive him. In other words, he keeps doing the same thing or keeps finding ways to hurt you and all of that. No matter how many times this person does it, you have to take it to yourself. Forgive. No strife. I don't want wala. I don't want hindrance to my prayer. Hallelujah. The response to, of the disciples to this is epic epic look at verse 5 and the apostles said unto him what wow. Wow. in other words increase our capacity to absorb when they heard it they are like Abba who continues to take this kind of you know, BS, pardon my French, over and over and will just forgive and just keep trusting that, okay, this person meant it for, you know, he's sincere and all of that. In one day, seven times, ah, ah. He said, you have to take it to yourself. Forgive this person. And they have to look at him and say, Lord, increase our faith. So we are seeing the connection between the expression of faith and what? offense and strife praise god is a capacity so you know we said faith is a manner or a way of thinking i know we've been taught in some other structural way around faith how to have faith it's, it's, it's just a thinking process hallelujah that aligns with the thinking process of god so you'll be like your father who is in heaven that even though there are wicked people also he pours down rain upon the wicked and the righteous as well do you understand what i'm saying amen now look at what jesus said after this it's also very epic and the lord said in other words increase our faith this is his answer to increase our faith if ye had faith as what a grain of mustard seed please can we have that picture Lord, increase our faith. If you have faith as a mustard seed, what do you see about that seed? Insignificant. It is nothing. Praise God. <laughs> The reason why we get offended is because of reputation. You understand? There's some level of pride. How, how dare you? But if you consider yourself as nothing, amen, insignificant, 
That's why I said, let this kind of thinking be in you as it is in Christ Jesus. He said he considered himself of no reputation. You know, it's our tiny reputations here and there. Amen. That leaves room for offense. Amen. So, the more humble you are, the more power to you. If you have faith as a mustard seed, if your thinking pattern is so that nothing. Amen. I entered into that wedding, they didn't welcome me well. Amen. I entered into that meeting, I'm a pastor, they didn't tell me to come to the front. Consider yourself nothing. Hallelujah. So the mightiest and powerful, or most powerful person is the person who is humble, little, no reputation. You mess with me, I'll forgive you. You may look like the fool, but power is actually in your direction. Praise God. Let's go back to the scripture. Man. If you have faith as what? A grain of mustard seed. One grain of mustard seed. Ye might say unto this sycamine tree. Do you see that? Be thou plucked up by the roots and be thou planted in the sea and it should what? Obey you. Do you see that? So the most humble person is the person who actually has capacity to exercise power and authority. Amen. Tell your neighbor, I'm nobody. I'm just a brother or a sister who has found favor. <laughs> Amen. I'm just a brother as fine favor. Ah, how do you do it? I'm just a brother <laughs> who has found favor. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 The Bible says that a man who is slow to anger is mightier than a warrior. And one who has control over his spirit is what? Is mightier than one who takes an entire city. Do you get that? That if you are slow to anger, you are patient. You have more power than a gra, -gra warrior. Praise God. So God is stripping us of ourselves so that He can be seen and be manifest. Hallelujah. Jesus, the Bible says he humbled himself unto death, even the death upon the cross. It was a humiliating experience, but he bore it. And see, right there on the cross, he still prayed, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they are doing. Praise God. He didn't take offense. They mocked him, hail, king of the Jews. Put a crown of thorns instead of proper crown of, you know, and they, 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 he still prayed for them, Father, forgive them. Are you following what I'm saying? Yes, when Stephen was dying also, he said, don't lay the offense upon them. Praise God. Look at the person we call the father of faith, Abraham. One of the things that made him the father of faith, meaning that when it comes to faith, just look at this guy's life, you will see all the components there was that he refused to do what? To strive with, uh, what's his name now? With Lot. When I was strife, he said, mm -mm -mm -mm. Oga, you know what? In fact, even though I'm your uncle, I wouldn't choose first. Satisfy yourself. Look around. Where do you want to go? And the guy chose the wonderful plains. Hallelujah. 
Anyone looking at Abraham right there will say, look at this fool. Do you understand what I'm saying? So him deferring to someone that he should be commanding is a sign of what? Humility. To just say, go. And when that one show, he didn't look at him and say, ah. Even though I told you to choose first, your, your brain is not working. <laughs> Am I not the one that, you know, gave you everything that you have and all that? He didn't take any offense. Because he himself, man sees on the outward, God sees the heart. He himself, I'm sure, is looking at that plane. I mean, say. <laughs> Amen. But when that happened, what? God spoke to him. Look around. Hallelujah. And he risked his life to still go and save that same lot. Amen. Prepared his army and went to do what? Went to war. That is love expressed. Refusing to take offense. Hallelujah. Glory to God forevermore. Amen. Look at Proverbs 25. Now you see how God judges. Ah, you know what? Stay here. Let's read further. Although I don't have time to explain everything there, but the Lord will interpret to you. Amen. Look at verse 7. There, is, there are more lessons there. But which of you, having a servant plowing or feeding cattle, will say unto him, By and by, when he is come from the field, go and sit down to meet? And will not rather say to him, Make ready wherewith I may sup, and get thyself and serve me, till I have eaten and drunken, and afterward you can eat. Doth he thank the servant, because he did these things, that were commanded him? Amen? I throw not. So likewise ye, <laughs> you are laughing, <laughs> when ye shall have done all those things which are commanded you, say, we are what? Unprofitable servants. We have done that which was what? Our duty to do. Somebody say forgiveness is your duty to do. Praise God. It's basic. Do you understand? It's, it's part of the ordination. Offenses will come. You have to forgive. You don't take your forgiveness as or your ability to forgive to now create pride again looking for thank you you understand i uh, forgive you it's don't expect any thank you do you understand what i'm saying <laughs> don't come back because they probably go don't come back and say ah adariji you know like you, i we forgave him and you know he there's no credit for it do you understand you are doing yourself good you are taking heed to yourself it's basic expectation praise god hallelujah proverbs chapter 25 quickly as we round up look at this it is Verse, uh, go to verse 21. You also find in Romans 12. If what? Thy enemy be hungry, give him bread to eat. If he be thirsty, give him water to drink. For thou shalt heap coals of fire upon his head, and the Lord shall what? Shall reward you. Praise God. So when he says, woe to him by whom those offenses come, you just walk in love. Do you understand? By so doing, the person will receive just recompense of reward. But if you are walking in love, you won't rejoice over whatever is happening. Do you understand what I'm saying? Amen. Abraham had to pray and negotiate for the city. Yeah, 
Okay, Lot is there. Ah, God, you can go ahead. Go and destroy. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. You said, let, let him learn his lessons. Hallelujah. So, do what? Just walk in love. And forgive. It's a way of expressing power. Look at Luke verse chapter 18 as we close. I still have 10 minutes. So, I'm closing in good time. A follow up on that. Look at this. And he spake a parable unto them on this end that men ought always to pray and not what? Faint. Saying there was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, Do what? Avenge me of mine adversary and he would not for a while but afterward he said within himself though i fear not god nor regard man yet because this widow troubleth me i will avenge her lest by her continual coming she wearies me out God was, or Jesus, was talking about a judge that doesn't fear God nor man. Okay? And that he himself, by the time the woman has come a number of times, he will just answer and say, look, let me answer this widow. Yet because this widow troubled me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she wearies me out. Next verse. And the Lord said, hear what the unjust judge said. Meaning, notice what the unjust judge, that's an unjust judge. Now look at God now. And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? Next verse. I tell you that he will do what? Avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, what? Shall he find faith on the earth? What is Jesus trying to say here? And if you go back and read that Proverbs 25, you see where the Bible says that, you know, um, God will avenge. Or, what is it, Romans 12? Hallelujah. What is Jesus trying to say here? He's saying that if an unjust judge, because of many prayers, would answer that woman quickly he's saying that god who is not unjust amen now you know we may think that this verse is saying that you have to pray to god many times for you to get what answer what is actually saying here it or is not because you have not prayed enough I want you to get this. The reason why your prayer has not been answered is not because you have not cried unto him enough. He said the unjust judge, even after many cries, will answer. So why will God not answer you speedily concerning your prayer when you call on him? He said the reason why you are not seeing prayer that i'm tarrying is because i'm looking for what faith i tell you he will avenge them speedily nevertheless in other words this is the problem shall we find faith on the earth praise god this is a woman asking for vengeance in other words she is offended somebody has offended her all right and she's seeking for justice praise god the faith god is waiting to see on the face of the earth is your capacity to forgive are you following what i'm saying here 
that I'm looking for faith. I need to see faith expressed. That the reason for this delay is not in my hands. It's in your hands. I'm looking for what? Faith. You have been offended. You are seeking justice. But you know what? You have to do what? To give your enemy food. Give him water. Take no offense. Don't be angry. Consider yourself no reputation. Nothing. And then you will see him what? Answer you speedily. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, DDK used to say something that marriage is God's strategy or God's best idea to mature believers. Amen. <laughs> because when you get married, offenses will come. <laughs> so it is a tool to build your capacity. Do you understand what I'm saying? Okay, husbands and wives are silent now. <laughs> because the person that really has capacity to hurt you, or the greatest capacity to hurt you, are the people that you love. Uh, do you understand what I'm saying? So I put here nodding. You know something wrong. I suffered some heartbreak in the past. You suffered heartbreak. Anyone? So far, that break. <laughs> Heart smashing. The thing is so painful, but you can't explain it. Abby? And the people are petting you and saying, sorry, sorry. They really don't get it. They're looking at, what's, what do you see in this person now? Just let this person go. Why are you all going crazy? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So husband, I think was it two Sundays ago or so? Well, look at that scripture. Don't offend your wife. Oh. Treat her well. <laughs> it says so that your prayers will not what? Be hindered. Amen. So in marriage, take what? Heed to yourself. Hallelujah. Because that one is the one that can come seven times in a day, really. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? So every time you just forgive, just forgive, just forgive. Like I you can't you can't stop me from from answer to my prayer. <laughs> and I exercise capacity. Hallelujah. Let's rise to our feet as we bless God. Thank you.